Stuart Chaffe, welcome to the Computer Chronicles, the launch, in fact, of our 18th season on the air as we close in on our 900th program. What's amazing is that after 17 years of doing this, it's still not dull, and every week there is cool new technology to talk about, like digital music. From mp3.com to Napster or Scour or Songspy.com, the digital revolution has certainly changed the music business forever. And this week, we want to show you how to get the most out of the digital music phenomenon. First of all, kind of the basics of MP3 from a man who ought to know. He is the author of this book, MP3 for Dummies, Andy Rathbone. And Andy, I know a lot of our viewers are very much into this, and they're ripping their CDs and burning their CDs right now. But a lot of people don't really know the details of this. We'll get into some of the more complicated stuff a little bit later in the show. Right now, let's review the basics. What's the big deal about an MP3 file? Well, the big deal is that for the first time, computer technology is letting people store music on their computers. That could never be done before because the music files were so big. But MP3 lets people compress those files into something that's small enough to store on the computer and download from the Internet. So it's digital music so you can play it on your computer and compressed so it's manageable. Right? Exactly. All right, now where do you find MP3 files? You go on the web and you do what? You go on the web and you can download them or you can um, create them from your own CDs. All right, so if you want to find MP3s on the web, where do you go and how do you know sort of what's legal to do and what's not legal mm -hmm. to do? Well, one of the places where there's really no question about the legality is MP3.com, where people, MP3.com. Yes, yeah, so that's the site we have up right now. Where the artists have uploaded their own material, they want people to listen to it for promotional reasons. So are you searching just the MP3.com site here, or can you go out and search the whole web for MP3s? You, you can search the whole web, but MP3.com, you know you're listening to stuff that the artists want you to okay, hear. Okay, so you're not stealing anybody's music if you're going through MP3.com. Yes. We'll just run through this. I mean, if we want to look for, I don't know, a Louis Armstrong song or something. We well, we'd, we'd head to the jazz, and it brings up the jazz tunes that it has. And uh, Louis Armstrong is one of the, um, the big ones to be I downloaded. Think, yeah. So, I mean, no big deal. The same kind of search you might do for anything else. You just happen to be searching. Yeah, for let's MP3 go to file. traditional jazz. And there he is, number one under traditional uh, And traditional this is legal. Jazz. I could pull that down. Exactly. No big deal. Whoever owns the rights to that Louis right. Armstrong song has uploaded And there it. are hundreds of thousands of titles out there at yeah. least, right? Yeah. All right. Now, all right, so I've got these files now. Do you need something special in terms of a download, a piece of software to actually play these MP3s on your computer? Well, Windows 98 and Windows Me both come with the, uh, the, uh, the Windows Media Player, which can play MP3 songs. Okay, so, so you really don't need to download anything else to get basic level playing of your MP3. Got it. Now let me ask you about this issue. You know, people are getting sued all over the place, and some people feel it's, feel it's cheating and stealing to download some of these other MP3s. Let's talk about Napster for a second, mm -hmm. and go to the Napster site if you would, sure. and just explain what the whole Napster thing is about. Well, Napster is a, uh, is a, a search engine, but it's um, where people are uploading songs that they just rip off their own right. CDs. So it's my copies. songs I may want to let you have access to. Yeah, well, let's say somebody goes out and buys um, Elvis Costello's latest okay. uh, CD, and they like it a lot, and they copy it onto their computer, and then they upload, or they let people upload and or download those yeah. songs. Well, and let's show so how Napster works. I mean, suppose I wanted to pick something off uh, on, on Napster. Suppose I was looking for that. Uh, will you, you pick a song. Well, so I just typed in the Beatles here, and then clicked Find And there's find a it. lot of Beatles choices. And here are the, the Beatles songs. I mean, the fact is, is what? I mean, there's a couple million titles up there now. In that well, story. right now, there's currently um, about uh, one and a quarter million yeah. songs available. Okay. And, but again, this is not sitting anywhere on a, on a central server, right? These are people who sort of have these on their computer somewhere and are willing yeah. to share them. Exactly. But and what Napster does is it, um, when you log on, then Napster will look on your hard drive to see what files you want to share. Right. And then it puts them on its main database of all the files everybody right. else wants to share. And then everybody just kind of swaps. And if I want to grab one of those Beatles songs and put it on my hard drive, it's just as, you know, sort of a click, just, right? Just grab it. Yeah. Oh, and there like, it goes. Uh, I now have it. Day in the life. Mm -hmm. And it's getting the information, and it's going to start to and download. the quality is pretty damn good. It is good. Right. It can be slow if you have a, uh, a slow modem. But if you have okay. a cable modem or DSL... Now, real quickly, just a couple other points. People hear about Nutella as opposed to Napster. Explain what Nutella is. Well, Nutella doesn't That's have G -N -U -T -E -L -L -A. that... That's G-N-U-T-E-L-L-A. Yeah, yeah, and it is new. And some people say it'll be the replacement for Napster right. because of the legal issues they've been running into with the record companies. Nutella works differently in that it doesn't have that central database of where all the files are stored. Instead, when you want to get right. a file, 
your computer will tell other computers to search for that file. So, so nobody is shut it. down. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's slower and it's a little harder to use, so it hasn't quite it, it's grown more in popularity. Kind of as a, as real, a real quick, what's your view on the whole morality, legality issue here? Do you feel bad about pulling a song off Napster? Well, if the song is up there for promotional purposes, the record company wanted something to be shared, that's fine. But as a, uh, a writer, I, I you don't want somebody to rip off computers. your books, exactly. Or your music. You know, or I'd stop writing books because yeah. I couldn't feed my Got family. It. All right, thanks a lot, Andy. Thanks for having me. Steve. All right, well, perhaps the best thing about all these MP3s is the fact that you can now create your own music CDs, just the cuts you want to hear. There are a couple of tricks to doing this right now, and here to guide us is Elliot Van Buskirk, who is senior editor for CNET.com's Music Center. How are you doing? How are you doing? Okay, so we've downloaded all these files. We've got a bunch of MP3s around. I want to burn them into a CD because I want to carry it around with me in my portable player. Let's go through the basic process of doing that. And I guess, first of all, we have to be clear there's really two different kinds of CDs you can burn, right? Exactly. There's, there's one kind of CD, which is the kind of CD you buy in a store. This is called a Red Book Audio CD. Music. And um, that's just music that can be played by your car CD player, your portable CD player, any, any CD player you have. Okay. And uh, we're going to do that one first. The other kind is a data CD made of just MP3 files. And someone would use that more for archiving. I mean, once, once you start getting into Napster and all of that, um, you can run out of hard drive space <laughs> right. like really, really quickly. So um, this way you can put 650 megs of these MP3s onto a CD like this right. and uh, pop it in your drive, play those CDs, play those MP3s whenever you want, right. delete them off your computer, and save a lot of space. All right, so let's go through the process right now. I've got a bunch of MP3s on my hard disk right now. I don't want to carry on my laptop. I want to burn them on a CD. Right. What do I do? What software do I use? What's the process for doing it? Um, it used to be that you had to turn the MP3s into WAV files, that is, decompress them to their original size right. so that they could go on to uh, CD. We're talking today's, about the music CD now. Exactly, the music CD. Um, today's MP3, or today's uh, CD burning software um, has become adept at transferring okay. that, that file. So you've got a laptop itself. with a CD writer in here. Right. All I've got is a CDR drive, a CDR Blank right here. CD. Just pop that Boom in. Boom and go. And uh, we're going to make an audio CD. So, so tell us about the software we're using. This is Easy CD Creator Pro, which for Windows is pretty much the leading app. Sort of app. standard now, it's right? It's becoming the de facto standard, absolutely. Um, but it, it all works the same with all of this. Okay, I mean, this so is a very simple how process. So I select Audio CD. This is important. To get the one that will play in a normal stereo, so cannot select So if you want to put it in your car, CD. you need this one. Exactly, exactly. So here's my MP3 files called okay, MP3 so there are all the files, files on your hard drive. Here's what I've got here. So I'm just going to select all of these. Just a drag and drop and say, hey, put it on the exactly. CD. Exactly. And these are MP3s. These are just right off the internet. Got it. Um, I didn't do anything special to these. Um, this just goes right in like that. Boom, done. Now, what's happening at the bottom here? It's kind of interesting. We're seeing sort of how much time right. we have on there. Um, 650 megs of space gives you about 74 minutes of audio. So, uh -huh. um, this what this is showing us is how much each song is taking up. And we've still got a lot of space. We could right. put probably all of these twice on here if we wanted, but um, we're not going to do that. So. And, and the quality you're going to get here. It's pretty good quality. It's right? good quality, but it's only as good as the MP3 was. In um, place, information has been lost. This will not sound as good as a store-bought CD. So if you're buying stuff, you know, if you're thinking about right. getting away for Christmas with giving people uh, CDs sure. made like this, they're not going to sound as good. You yeah, know? because you've had compression in the process. Exactly. You can't. There's, you can't get something for free. All right. So, so let's go to the other type now. Suppose I want to do the data CD. First of all, why okay. would I want to do that? As opposed um, to the straight music CD. This is the main reason is uh, if you're running out of out of hard drive space. Um, yeah. Th these things take up about a minute per megabyte, I think. So okay. um, you, you run out really fast once you get a real Napster. Uh, all right, so you want a big collection of all your stuff, you're going to put it in the data right, CD. Right, and you can archive these into a data CD. You can also give those to other people. I mean, legality aside, this is a right. great way. You don't have to worry about to bandwidth. You're like, I got these great MP3s. Here they are. Everybody can play. All right, now the same process, I take it? Right, so what we do is. And a, same software. Uh, same software, right. And this is really similar no matter what you're using. Um, so I, I select data CD. I don't want to save that. Okay. Um, and I do the same thing. I get all of my MP3s. And I could be doing this with 150 MP3s if I wanted right. to, but for purposes of demonstration. And this is going to take less space. Um, before, right. This, obviously. If, as you can see, the bar at the bottom here. So now is we're in right megabytes, not time. Right. So I'm going to say create CD. Um, the important thing about this is the write speed. If you're making uh, the other kind of CD, which is the audio CD. Um, some older CD players can get very finicky about what they'll play and what uh -huh. they'll what they won't yeah. play. So you want to if you have if you run into trouble, try burning at a slower speed, two x or even one x, and uh, that way the laser stays okay. pointed More at the CD for a longer time. It. Right, it's going to really get the groove in there. Okay. So, um, and then advanced features. Um, 
With an audio CD, you want to close the session every time after you're done. Okay, so we don't have time for the whole process, right. but you burned one just Those a little bit tips. before. Right. So why don't you pop in a finished one? Right, so I made this minutes like. ago here. And we just pop this in here. And you're your own record company now. That's right. <laughs> exactly. And so boom, go running in there playing. This is my normal music. thing. Yeah. Let's see if I can get some tunes to come out of here. CD player. So this could be a normal stereo right here. There's sure, it doesn't have to be the about computer, this. right? This exactly. You're just running so the I CD just, player I just on the say computer. Go. Exactly. Play the track and go. And there we are. Let's see. Oh, now I'm fumbling. Right there. I'm not used to this kind of a mouse here. Yeah, everybody struggles with that now. Yeah. There we go. There we go. My music. There it is. Beautiful. All right. Last question before we wrap up here again. I just talked to Andy about this sort of morality issue. Okay. In the Napster world, I mean, these folks do it, right? Right. I mean, do you think it's a terrible thing to pull down a file for a Napster number? I personally do not think that it's a, it's a bad thing. I mean, the law is very hazy on this. You can make a copy for a friend um, under the DMCA, and that's perfectly legal. Just one right. copy. The thing is, the scale is what they're complaining about. And legally, I don't even know if there's a real basis for stopping people from doing this. I mean, yeah. other than changing the law. And uh, I, also, I feel like people who are worried about um, ripping off their favorite artists, um, with the deals they get, they actually make a lot more money on touring and merchandising. <laughs> I mean, unless itself. you're an established, it's a promotional right? Thing. I mean, yeah. people go in the hole to record labels very badly yeah. on this stuff. So, real quick, Elliot, people talking about shutting down Napster or the Napster as we know it right, right. now, or knew it in the past. What happens in that event? I mean, it's just going to happen again, right? Right, it'll happen again. I mean, there's this. It's, this is it. how it is now, and I yeah. think that uh, the Bertelsmann deal is actually a good idea because they're starting to accept that this is something that will happen. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Whether right. they do it or not. So, Elliot, thanks a lot. Thank you.